Hello friends, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to start a new series for the App Builder Certification Series questions. So this is a series of videos. So please do subscribe if you want to know the detailed answers uh, about all the uh, questions in this certification exam. So some of these questions have appeared in the App Builder Certification recently. So you may want to subscribe because I'll be posting a series of uh, videos in this explaining in detail about each and every questions and try to find the right answers either to the trailblazer or trailhead or even in any other you know blogs so uh, I'm going to discuss each questions in detail to find the right answer satisfied answer so please do subscribe and let me get started so the first question is an app builder has been asked to integrate salesforce with an external web service the web service must be notified every time an opportunity is won so which of the two following can search for the requirement so the process first option is use process and an outbound message i don't think it's possible use process and apex code possible use workflow and an outbound message possible and use a flow and an outbound message so the uh, correct answer seems to be b and c let's go ahead and validate this i have opened my uh, sandbox so i have created a dummy process builder so here i'm going to see you know the options there is no outbound message options available in the apex i mean a process builder but we have an option to call an apex class so basically you have to make it as an invocable class uh, with which you'll be able to call from here so the process and the apex code is possible so let's go ahead and see in the flow builder so in the flow builder also i'm not able to see any options for the outbound message so the flow and outbound message is ruled out and in the workflow um, this is a dummy uh, rule I have created just to see the options available and these are the options available in the workflow so uh, as you know there is a new outbound message option available in the workflow so we can call it from the workflows so the correct answer is a and b and c sorry so use process and the apex code use workflow rule and an outbound message okay so let's go ahead with the next question which type of relationships can be defined with external objects select one or more so I, uh, let's go ahead and find the right answer i have opened the documentation of uh, uh, trailblazer community so this is part of the you know external object relationship documentation so here i can see the options available lookup options available lookup relationship option available for the external uh, object relationship is lookup external lookup and indirect lookup so in this case right answer for us is a and b external lookup and indirect lookup so moving on to the next question we have uh, the director of the marketing has asked the app builder to create a formula field that tracks how many days have elapsed since the contact was sent to marketing communication so the director is in only interested in the whole unit so here in this case we have to <clears throat> identify which function returns the you know number of the days we have now function date value today and date so let me go to the salesforce documentation which says you know if you want to find how many days there are between two days two dates and the created data of an account for example use today and the date value so <clears throat> in this case i would say today because you know we also had to track how many days have elapsed since the contact was last sent marketing communication so you can argue it's date value as well but in this case you cannot have two date values and calculate the whole units which does not make sense with the question so that's why i would go with today so the correct answer is today next question what metadata changes can be made directly in the production environment without deploying the sandbox i think this is uh, <clears throat> pretty straightforward if you have worked on the apex classes so i know for sure that the apex classes and the triggers anything related to apex cannot be modified in the production directly 
so validation rules it's mostly declarative option so you can edit the validation rules in the production and uh, visual force pages as well so for sure if you are sure that apex class and triggers cannot be modified in the production then there you know by default you can choose these two answers so the correct answer is a and d next question An app builder <clears throat> would like to streamline the user experience by reflecting the summarized calculation of the specific <clears throat> on the various object. So what type could be used in the roll-up summary to accomplish basically, you know, which are the, which field type are available for the roll-up summary. So the percent currency, time, date, and the checkbox. So I think percent for sure, currency, uh, time, I don't think there's anything data type like this and date. So let's go and check the documentation part um, so yeah we have date date time and the time formulas for time is not a you know there is nothing like time data type so uh, let me uh, go back to this one so yeah I have this open sorry so the types of the field you can use in roll-up summary field depend on the type of the calculation you're doing so the number currency and percent fields are available when you select sum so if you select sum number is not there so percent and currency and when you select min and max you have a number currency percent date and date time so date time is not there so date so i would say correct answer is a percent b currency and d date so the next question is which type which sandbox types allows for the use of sandbox templates so basically it's a which type of the sandbox with which you can use the sandbox template basically it, it, you create a template and you know uh, when you want to clone it or when you, you select the set of the data or any metadata configurations you want to move so that's why you use the sandbox template so which is available in which type of the sandbox so I think it's partial sandbox let's go ahead and see the documentation so here it says sandbox templates allow you to pick specific objects and data type to copy or copy your full or partial sandbox to control the size and content of the each sandbox so it's available only in the full and partial sandbox so we don't have the full sandbox option so obviously it is partial sandbox so the correct answer is B Moving on to the next question, um, at Universal Containers, multiple departments utilize the case object for the different purpose. Some users submit the cases for the IT and the HR request and the other users provide customer support with case records. How can an app builder enable different users to see the different fields based on the case type? So basically here we want to see, you know, based on the user, uh, uh, you know based on the user profile or you know he, it's basically profile how do you enable different users to see the different fields so the first option um, uh, record type page layout and case teams and profile so I don't think uh, you know uh, the common pattern in this answers I see is the record type page layout and the profile are common so the only change uh, you know different item is case teams permission sets field set and support process <coughs> excuse me so uh, the case teams I don't think you know you can with the case teams it's basically you know which enables for the different set of the records you have access to so the first option is ruled out and permission sets is also to give additional uh, you know privileges to the user I know be it edit or anything like that so this is also ruled out and field set is also not an option because i think field set is mainly used to you know uh, add a flex i mean add fields on the flexible basis so that it appears in the page load whichever it's being used so the, even the option c is ruled out so i would say the correct answer is d with the support process because case do have support process and based on the profile you can assign the page layout and the record type for uh, those users so with this you can make which are the fields available to which users with particular profile okay so the correct answer is d let's go to the next question 
So the VP of sales at the universal container wants to have a set of screens to guide the inside sales team through collecting and updating data for leads. How can a builder accomplish this? So this is pretty straightforward question. So visual workflow process builder uh, workflow Salesforce connect. Uh, I don't think I you know the process builder workflow and Salesforce connect have any user interface. So I would say the correct answer is visual workflow with which you know you can uh, you know have a screen to guide the sales teams to collect and update the data for leads so the correct answer is a visual workflow and unicell container has deployed custom tabs through the chain sets without including the profile to the production enterprise edition so uh, this is important here they have specifically mentioned the enterprise edition here so which statement is true to regards to visibility of the custom tab so my the correct answer is d i'll tell you why uh, let me go to the documentation part so here yeah so choose the user here, here, this is the documentation part of the creating the custom object tab and here if i if you scroll down you can see choose the user profile for which the new custom tabs will be available and after it is written that for professional edition and salesforce platform on license user tab visibility will be set to default on i mean only for the professional edition and salesforce platform on users so in this case default on option is ruled out because it's enterprise edition and uh, another point to note is here there is an article in the null you know trailblazer community which says custom tab not visible for the user and the resolution is suggested is you know to check if the field deployment status is deployed same in classic and also if you checked user permission and this and the tab is still hidden check the following troubleshooting the tab may be hidden for the profile so go to the user profile and change it to default on so the tab are hidden for all the users if you don't specify the profile we know that in the question they have mentioned that without including the profile so it will be obviously hidden so that's why the correct answer is custom tabs are hidden for all the user next question so what are the two reasons to create unmanaged package choose to answer so it's already marked in bold sorry let me go back so yeah the two reason is distributing upgradable components to other salesforce are and distributing open source project on the app so why these two are the correct answer let me take you to the documentation part so understanding packages so these are the this is a documentation salesforce documentation so what is unmanaged and managed package so here you can clearly see the unmanaged packages are typically used to distribute open source projects or application templates to provide developer with the basic building blocks for an application so this is straightforward distribute open source project which is distribute open source project one of the option and application templates about basic building blocks that doesn't i mean that's also means that distributing upgradable components to the to other salesforce or so that's why these two are the right answer so that's the end of this series please do uh, subscribe uh, to my channel i'll be posting more videos on these app builder application app builder certification series so there are more question terms i'll prepare the detailed explanation for each questions you know and which will be helpful for you if you are appearing for a app builder certification exam so and also click the bell icon for the new video notification uh, thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye